Hey guys, welcome to your next assignment where you're going to be making a literal interpretation. So here's my example that I did. I'm going to walk you through these steps, okay? So file new again, and remember you can name it up here. Hit name, and you can type in what you want. So I'm going to do moon two. Change my size to like 12 by 10 and checking my inches here. Transparent background and hit create. Okay, now what I want to do first is I want to come up with a background, and I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm going to hit the lock and get that to go away. I'm going to come up with a background. I made a gradient. You can either use a paint bucket or make a gradient. I wanted to give it a cool background, something different. So click on this. I can change my colors in here if I want to. So maybe I want like a pink to a red, and then you drag it across, so you can make a gradient. Then I want to bring over, and I'm going to do Control A, Control C, and Control V. I want to bring over my honeycomb. Okay, um, and then that's going to be on layer one. Okay, and then I'm going to do one more layer. I'm going to bring over the moon. See, I already highlighted it. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to show you using, once again, um, you're going to use your uh, quick selection. Don't use object selection because that gets a little funky. So I'm highlighting that. I got everything. I'm going to hit control C, control V. Okay, now if you want to resize it, remember that you can come up and you can go to edit free transform and it'll tell you on your computer how you can resize and i hold shift to get it to look normal I enter when i'm done now we want to mask this layer so that the honeycomb kind of goes and fits in it to make the little literal interpretation of it and so what i'm gonna do okay i'm going to um, basically highlight this again and i know it's gonna be a little funky on this time just because of the fact that it's um it's different from the original image. It's actually able to pick up the pixels with it. Okay, so I've got what I wanted here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click this little mask button. This means to mask something. So now it has that area highlighted. Okay, then I drag layer one and I'm going to drag it above layer two. If I can lift it a little bit, there we go. Now that I'm selected off of it. And then I'm going to get off of that because otherwise it's going to keep doing image analysis to you. So make sure you're not always sitting on quick selection. Come back up to your arrow. You're going to come up to layer, clipping mask, and look, it clipped to the layer below. And this way you can also start to play around with how it looks to in the blending modes. Like maybe I want my moon to look almost like the sun. Maybe I'm going to play with the opacity a little bit too to make it look a little bit more um, realistic. Like I kind of like this, how it lightens it, or how let's see what the screen does. It um gives you the different effects of it. I like lighten the best so far, kind of cool with the way the moon is coming through. Once you have that, you have a literal interpretation. Um, one thing I could do for my background, and now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I could make it look like, you know, the universe with my colors. Like, I could pick my blue. I could come in, if I click here, it'll let me pick a second color, or a third color, I guess I should say. Picking another one. Okay, there's already purple in there. I'm going to click this. I'm going to get, like, a dark purple. And then I'm going to like give a fade of all these colors in here. And if you don't want one, you can hit delete. Like I don't want this. I'm hitting delete on my keyboard, which is nice. Okay. So I can even come in. So maybe I want to come in and add a dark teal here. I can move my uh, brush to get what I want. And then change whatever kind of fade you want. So now I'm going to add the ombre background in, making sure I'm on the back layer to kind of get that universe piece to it. Once you're done, all you need to do is hit File, Save as PST, okay, and then it should download it and file export as a JPEG, and voila. This one's a lot easier than the other ones. Um, we're kind of rounding up going into spring break, and I will have the next one for you on Tuesday for your odd block day. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.